Three, two, one, boom! Broadcasting live from the center of the universe, presenting the world's only business school without the BS, with optometrist and entrepreneur Dr. Robert Zellner and USSBA Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark. Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Yes, sir. It's Z and Clay, broadcasting from the box in the 918. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to another fabulous podcast edition of the Thrive Time Show on your podcast download. Now, Z, the podcast edition gives us the ability to go uh, maybe more intensely, maybe more in depth. We can be more pragmatic because we don't have to uh, adhere to the rules of a radio show. You know what it's like? Sorry What's to cut like? you off. What's it like? But it's, it's kind of like, I want to get crazy, going commando. Chop. That's what podcasts are like. Are you going commando? No, I'm, a, I'm not. But yeah, this is like a going commando version of a radio show. I uh, appreciate that analogy, and I rebuke <laughs> the visuals that came to my mind. And so, Z, the question that we get asked from a lot of entrepreneurs as it relates to human resources, HR 101, is how do you find good people? And then they then they, they kind of get into that mindset of like, there's not enough good people out there, so I'm not going to recruit right now. I'm not going to expand because there's not enough good people. And I would just tell every entrepreneur listening, nothing works unless your people do. Nothing works at all unless your people do. And so here are the steps for finding the good people. And I want to get Z's take on this because these are like the man cave sessions. If you were sitting with Dr. Z in the man cave, which very few people get the, the uh, pleasure of doing, the privilege of doing, this is the real and raw stuff he would say. So here we go. Never stop posting for available jobs on Craigslist, Indeed, recruiting at restaurants. I mean, you just never stop recruiting. Never. But Z, most people stop recruiting once they feel like they have a good team, and then somebody quits, and now they're screwed again. It's a cycle of up and down, up and down. We're, we're so successful. We're going to be great. We have a great team. Oh, they're moving. Oh, she got pregnant. Oh, she quit. Now we're all everything's falling apart. I have to do everything myself. Z, help us stop the jackassery of always being overstaffed, understaffed. Overstaffed. Back, back in the day, and what I tell and when I train now my people that do the hiring, you know, I only hire at certain levels now, but back when I was doing all the hiring, I <clears throat> every time I talked to someone, I interviewed them for a job. Mm. That was my mindset. Every time I talked to someone anybody. Anybody. Yes. Doing anything, parking my car, serving me a hamburger, um, Anybody. Because you know that ultimately you can hire character and train skill. You know this as an right. optometrist. You can train. Every eye exam I turned into a interview. Every one. Every one. I was sizing them up. Every single one. And I hired a couple of great early on. I got some of my best employees because they had come in and they were patients of mine. But there's people who will say it's time to stop advertising because we're already fully staffed. I already have a full staff. Why should I advertise? Why should I interview? Why should I do interviews this week when, in fact, I, you know, already have the people I need? Why should I even go through the process of doing interviews and posting for jobs when I already have all the people I need, Z? Because those people are going to, at on their time schedule, leave you when it's best for them. And you don't have any idea when that's going to be. Now, Ryan here with Tip Top Canine is building a great organization. Uh, just in the past week, they opened up a location in Owasso and in uh, Boise, Idaho, and in Twin Falls. So you went from one location to four. Yep. Uh, can you, for anybody listening to this podcast, uh, can you explain what will happen if you don't do a job post, or if you don't do job posts every week and interview every week, what will eventually happen? Because you've been a business owner for over a decade. Right. What will happen? Well, your guy and then your backup guy will both uh, no call, no show, not show up, and you will not have anyone. Has that happened to you before? It does. It did happen. And then we had a group interview, and so I had actually three people waiting. So my first two um, did no call, no show. We fired them on the spot, and then I had a third guy. Can you explain to me the worst moment in your HR career where some, where you had people that you thought you could count on mm -hmm. and they just started leveraging with you saying, if I they start using their leverage, realizing you don't have a backup plan going, right. well, I, I need to be paid more or I may quit or yeah. they just didn't show up. Or what's the worst HR nightmare that you've ever experienced as a result of not 
recruiting every week previous to knowing this information? Well, before I did that, we had a guy, and he didn't want to follow all the systems. Mm. right? And he was one of our top guys, and at the time, I did not have a replacement. Z, shocking. And, yeah. Shock con. Okay. <laughs> so that sucks, right? right? So then what am I supposed to do? Be like, okay, I'm going to do all of my job and do that too. Do his job completely. He didn't want to follow the systems. He right. And have a backup plan. Right. Chup, where do people get stuck here, man? You see it every day as a business coach. I want to help heal somebody. There's somebody out there right now. I can, I can just feel it. There's somebody listening to this show song? right help. now. There's somebody. Help. I need, I need somebody. somebody. Help. There's somebody out there listening to this. Says, yeah, but in my industry, it's different. I it's don't not different. need to recruit every week. It's harder in my industry. Key, I have a higher optometrist. You couldn't key. possibly <laughs> understand the profundity of my job. The key thing of what you just said is the two words every week. Every week. You have to keep that interview going every week. If there's a unicorn employee out there, somebody who's an A player, you better be hiring that week that their boss fires them for whatever, has to lay them off, or that they de- they're they fed up with that person and they quit. If they decide to do that on the three weeks out of the month that you're not interviewing people, you're going to miss out on that person. So you have to do it every single week. Now, Joel David, a good friend of mine, he's a jeweler in town. Every once in a while, he has somebody and he doesn't need another hire right now. Or I have somebody that is a good fit, but I don't need a hire right now. And guess what I do? I refer a good person to my friend because I know that my good friends are also looking to hire people of character right. and train skill. Now, see, the power of doing a group interview at the same time every week is if you do meet somebody at a restaurant, you can always say, hey, Wednesday at 5, we're interviewing. Oh, absolutely. And I always like stealing employees. Oh, I do. I the just, pirate. I, I always I like it. <laughs> it's, I like sniping them. You know, do you ever go snipe hunting? Snipe hunting? Yeah. Do you ever? I need to take you snipe hunting. Snipe? You know, you go deep in the woods. Is that yeah. a North Korean it's, move? It's, a, it's an elusive bird called snipe. <laughs> they taste They taste delicious. And you, you have like beaters and then you have catchers, you know, and so you, you drive the snipe into the, the nets. But I like the word sniping. So you I drive like to, I like the to, snipe into, into the, the nets? Into, into, the, into the catchers. And so you'd go out there and you'd set up and then I would drive the snipe towards you. I so, want to read the definition of a snipe here. Okay. It's Are a really? wading bird of marshes and wet meadows with brown camouflaged plumage. Plumage. <laughs> a long straight bill and typically a drumming display flight. Huh. Okay. Well, there you go. So there I guess go. when I fly, I have a drumming display. But. Or the word snipe means to shoot at someone from a hiding place, especially, especially <laughs> accurately <laughs> That's the way long you're, range. You're That's, describing it. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> well, and that, and that, and we do that to our you know, competitors too, right? We snipe them. But th- uh. what, <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes you can find great people that are unemployed. Yes. But I have found over the years. Over the years. I find more great people that are actually employed. Check oh. it out. This is what uh, Reed Hoffman talks about this. Reed Hoffman talks about this. Um, there was a Tim Ferriss podcast recently where he talked with um, Mr. Metcalf, uh, famous from uh, Metcalf's Law for creating the Ethernet, not the internet, but the Ethernet. And he talks about hiring today. It's not hiring, it's recruiting. Hiring is where somebody is just coming to you going, I just need a job, please, for the yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're going to grow a big company, you got to recruit, baby. Yes. you got to recruit top talent. One of my one of my moves oh, that I did moves. is I was open seven days a week, and that's hard to find people that want to work on weekends. So I would go where people are working on weekends. I go on. to the mall. They have later hours, and they work seven days a week there. Of course, their schedules go back and forth. They don't work seven days in the week, but they'll have to. You know, somebody has to work the Saturday Sundays. So I would go to the mall and just go store to store, uh, store to store, and just see what happens. Are you serious? You used to do this? Absolutely, store to store. I'd, oh I'd go. In the, I'd go in the eve. I'd go. I'd go sometimes early in the day because a lot of times you catch the full timers. Yeah. You know, they're the nine to fivers, and then the kids come in in the in the afternoon to come you know work for them like right. one to nine or something like that. You know, so I would go in. I would just walk in the store and see what happens. And if they were sharp and they were on their game and they approached me and they greeted me well and they were, you know, they, I felt like, and I'd watch them a little bit. They're used to working on nights and the weekends. Bingo. And so then I bingo. could. Bingo. Oh. So I, I would evaluate them on my five A's quickly, if, you know, as much as I could. Right. And then I would, I would, uh, I hired several great people out of the mall. Now, what, what are you looking for when you hire great people? That's the next question I get asked. What are you looking for? Well, Jack Welch wrote the book called Winning, which is the number one Winning. management book in the history of the planet, and he identifies the four E's. Don't overcomplicate this, Holmes. There's just four E's, or you have Dr. Z's five A's. Either way, I'm going to give them to you, okay? Here are the E's from Mr. Jack Welch, and then we'll go with Dr. Z's A's, okay? So here are the E's from Jack Welch. 
One, you look with people with good energy. If somebody's not energetic and they yawn all the time, he is not curious about what makes them yawn, nor is he going to sit around and motivate them to stop yawning. If you're that kind of an a-hole that you yawn during an interview, you're not going to get a job. When I say a-hole, I mean an amazing whole person who doesn't deserve a job for Mr. Jack Of course that's what you mean. Two, edge. Will this person make the tough call when they have all the facts? People who say, well, I don't want to throw somebody under the bus, but I think someone is stealing. If they even have that mindset, if you work for a company, the company is the bus, and if you are working for the company, you are on the bus, and the wheels on the bus go round and round, even though idiots get in the way. Third, execute. You got to get your job done. You could have a great attitude. You could be on fire. But if you can't code and your job is to code, then you're going to make the code explode. If your job is to sell and you can't sell, then you. So you got to find people that can get the job done. And the final is energized. This is a rare bird, but somebody who cares about pumping up the people around them. This is the Ray Lewis office linebacker. This is the Tim Tebow effect. This is Joe Montana. This is people who can motivate the people around them and make them better. That's tough. That's rare. Hard to find the four E's. Sometimes you settle for three. Sometimes you settle for two. But in a perfect world, I realize we don't live in a perfect world. You want to get the four E's. But Dr. Z thought about this. He's a small business owner, been a small business owner for years. And he thought about his A's, and he wrote them down. He documented them. These are the five A's from Dr. Z. Dr. Z, hit it. Well, the first one's appearance. I mean, that's self-evident. Are they well-dressed? Are they, they look like they've slept on their clothes for three days. You'd be surprised how many people go to an interview, or you see them at work, and you go, oh, my gosh. And you're not going to try to fix somebody who <laughs> no. dresses like that. You're just done. Yeah, I'm just, I'm out, you know. Attitude. attitude. How is their attitude? I mean, do they have a great attitude? Are they a negative person? Are they a positive person? I want to surround myself and have my employees be positive people. I don't want the glass to be half full. Somebody's listening I mean, going, no, but I want, to co- I want to find somebody and fix them. Well, then the, God bless you. God have bless fun. you. Have God, fun. God will probably bless you yeah. because you, you will not get any blessings on earth. You fine career as a life Hopefully coach. Hopefully you get those and, in heaven. But yeah, you, you can, earth, you you can take them to church, but don't hire them, right? That's yes. <laughs> yeah. Get them out of your office. Another one is attendance. Are they showing up? It's hard to do your job if you're not I there. I can't be here today because my car won't start. Uh, you'd be surprised. My wife is running behind. <laughs> Clay, you'd be surprised. And Chep, uh, you guys would be surprised at how many people want money but they don't want to have to show up and work. It's amazing. Well, I want to come to work, but the problem is I had to get my cell phone re- reset up there. I had to re- <laughs> get a new one. I had the the my- fourth A is accuracy. Can they do their job? Can they? Are they accurate? I mean, it, when we have really- a lot, a lot of our problems go back to sloppiness and inaccuracy of text. And so, if you're not accurate, it can cause a a domino effect of problems that just uh, I, I don't forgot want to, to write down how they heard about us. I forgot to write down. I forgot to write down. Well, that was what a plus, said. and I put a minus. I, Oops. I forgot yeah. to put in the right credit card number. And Oops. then the and then the fifth thing is above and beyond, and this really what separates your B. Which your B players are probably about your eighty percent of of your employees. Yes. You're that eighty percentile kind of the bell curve in the middle right there. Uh, this is what separates and, and lets them be an A player when they go above and beyond when they're doing more than what you're paying them to do. That just that's a mindset that just separates them. Um, and if you can't get at least two or three out of these five out of me, then that puts them as a C category, and we try to replace them as quick as possible. And if you're never done recruiting, you can be selective. This is how this works. Now, the next move is once you find someone that you like, this is my move, I like to have them shadow me for an hour or two. I'm not legalistic. I want you to shadow me just for an hour, maybe two, or somebody I respect because I want to see if you are the real deal. So many people say, oh man, I'm awesome at sales. I say, here's the deal. Great. Come on in tomorrow. Let's do some sales, baby. Hey, I'm great at coding. Cool. Let's have you sit down and do some coding. Let's code it out, my baby. Hey, I'm awesome at cutting hair. Cool. Let's do a demo haircut. Cut my mop. Let's do this thing. Somebody says, oh, but I don't typically cut under pressure. Ooh. Ding, ding, I typically ding, don't do ding, sale. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, right now. Ding, I mean, right now. Ding, 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 ding. I, I'm not. I, 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 I typically code better when I'm alone. You know, I typically dunk the basketball better when play, people aren't watching. You know, right. that's just <laughs> my how my style. So this is what happens: is if you can't embrace these rules, Sam Walton says this. There's only one boss, the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down simply by spending his money somewhere else. So I know Ryan at Tip Top is fastidious about his quality. But have you ever had a customer, say, back in the day, 10 years ago, 8 years ago, that they weren't happy with the quality and they went to somebody else? Has this ever happened? I know for me it's happened in my life. Has it ever happened for you? Yeah. And when it happens, do they go, well, is the person who failed to deliver a good person? Because if they are a good person and they're going through something in their personal life, that's cool. Or do they just move on? 
they tend to just move on. Yes, because the customer does not care about your virtuous worldview to keep people around and to coach them and to matriculate them into becoming perfect people. They say, hey, you know what? That person who's going through something, I care not. I just wanted your Starbucks to be open on time, so I'll go on down the road to another coffee place. That's how that works. So what happens is Jack Welch says, one thing you could do to let the whole team know what's acceptable and not is you could fire somebody publicly, which is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> so what you'll do is Jack Welch calls it the public hanging. He says public hangings are teaching moments. Every company has to do it. A teaching moment is worth a thousand CEO speeches. CEOs can talk and blab about the culture, but the employees all know who the jerks are. They could name them for you. It's just cultural. People just don't want to do it. Jack Welch. So I'll give you an example. I had a door back in the day at the Thrive offices at the Riverwalk. And I said, here's the deal, guys. I don't want you going out that door. Because if you go out that door, what's going to happen is you're going to leave it unlocked and something's going to get broken into. We've, we've had this discussion. Don't do it again. The next person that does, I want to be clear, if you do it again, one, that's not even a main entrance or exit. That's, that's you being squirrely. If you go out the door again, I'm going to fire you. And so we had a key team member decided just to do it, just to see what would happen. I watched them do it on purpose. And so I just said in a group meeting, everybody was there. I said, hey, everybody, this person, we've known them for a couple of years. They're fired. Bye-bye. And everyone's like, but they've been here for two years. Like, and they're fired. And they're fired. And then See what you. happens is all of a sudden people quit going out that door. <laughs> and I could do that because we're never done interviewing. But if I hadn't done that, one day I would come to work, the door would be unlocked, and I would be robbed. And I have been robbed in the past in businesses where people have broken in and stole our things. And Z... Not locking the door is a big deal. Not locking the door is a very big deal. Well, I just had one of my business just this week try to get broken into. Really? Yeah, but uh, they didn't. They didn't. They weren't successful. Did your moat get them or the lava? Did the lava get no, it? the alligators? The gators. Mm. The gators. Did you get them on camera? Yeah, no. They, they we got impaled on the spikes outside the. <laughs> Joel store. David they got, got hot tarred. <laughs> Joel hot David, tarred, tarred uh, one of our clients, got broken into this week, and it was like during the middle of the day, and they Jeez. asked of the one of the salespeople to see the ring, so she. Showed the guy the ring, and he just grabbed it out of her hand and took off. Yeah. Crystal clear camera, midday. Busted. Busted. Awesome. What, were, what do people think? I mean, the cameras are they're everywhere. I mean, it's kind of like, really? So really? the moral of the story really? is how do you find good people? Never stop recruiting. Ever. Never. Ever. See, never. Never. Ever. Ever. When? Never. Oh. Ever. Then, once you have really good people, if you find a person... You keep a letter grade next to the name of each and every team member. Mark them as A, B, or C. The A's are your top 10%. The B's are the middle. And the C's are the bottom 10. Well, what if they know that I'm ranking them? What if my own employees know that I do this show and they listen to it? Because they do. Then they would need to know right now, Mr. Employee listening, Mrs. Employee listening, are you an A, a B, or a C? Because if I find an A... I'm going to first go, you know what? I have an A, and I've got a C. It's an easy call. Easy call. Sometimes it's a less easy call, but I'll do it too. I have a B. I say, this is a good B. I've talked to them numerous times about what they could do to become an A. They've chosen not to become an A, so I've decided to fire them today. Bingo. And you know what? Oh. I went through seasons where we would have the busy times and the slow times. When we'd get to the slow times, I would ask my managers, call them in and say, hey, Who's your worst employee? Who is it? And <laughs> they would, they've learned they better have an answer, and they do now. And then I say, fire them. They're like, well, what are we ever have, really? It's time yes. for some pruning. I know it sounds mean, but you know what? It's, it's the man cave sessions. It's the man cave sessions. <laughs> In the man cave sessions, we just tell you how it Real is. Real and raw. It's more, Real. Like a, more like a mean cave session. Chup, you know what? On the next Man Cave session, we're going to be talking about time management 101 and freeing up your time to work on stuff that actually matters. But we like to end the show with a three and a two and a one and a boom. So, Z, are you ready? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Chup, you ready? I'm ready. Ryan, are you emotionally oh, yeah. ready? Okay, without any further ado, three, two, one, boom. boom.